It is another beautiful sunny day here in Central Florida. Champion Stadium where the Atlanta Braves call home today. The two winningest teams in the NL's Eastern Division this decade square off against one another in a final tune-up for opening day. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. Mike Morgan alongside former Atlanta Brave Brian Jordan. It's that time of year. Everybody trying to get their timing down, and no better way to do it than to face the very best pitchers that Major League Baseball has to offer. Yesterday, it was Justin Verlander going against the Braves. Today, another Cy Younger and left-hander Cliff Lee. Well, Mike, for the veterans here, they just want to get out of here healthy. They may be swinging at the first pitch they see. If you're a young guy, though, you face Verlander and Cliff Lee back-to-back, -back, you got to love it. It's a chance for those guys to make an impression. Cliff Lee, though, he's just working on efficiency today, trying to get through the game, pitch six, seven innings, and get out healthy. Of course, another storyline for spring training is always those positional battles, and we've got a good one going right now at shortstop. Today, it's Tyler Pasternicki who gets the nod. Well, Tyler Pasternicki probably has the edge right now. You look at Simmons. He's on the sideline his, uh, with the injury to his left side. We saw Pasternicki last year in AAA. This is a guy that plays adequate defense, not as good as Simmons, but he can hit and he can play everywhere as far as uh, defensively and offensively getting the job done. So I think Pastor Nicky will break uh, being the starting shortstop for the Braves. Of course, another roster spot up in the air right now. The number five starter spot. It's been a dog race between Delgado and Tehran. Julio Tehran gets the start today. He needs a big one. He needs a big start. He's only thrown 13 innings so far in spring training. Delgado up to 21. But this is a kid that came up last year. Uh, made a quick impact. He pitched great. And the Braves know what they have in Tehran and Delgado. But, you know, the start of the season, they got two off days. So I wouldn't be surprised if both of these guys get a start down in AAA, continue to build up that endurance, and be ready for late April. Phillies and Braves meeting for the final time this spring. Could be a harbinger of things to come in late September. Starting lineups and the first pitch are coming your way. Atlanta Braves baseball brought to you by VisitFlorida.com. Unleash your Florida side at VisitFlorida.com. Alongside Brian Jordan, Mike Morgan with you here at Champion Stadium, ESPN's wide world of sports. The Braves playing here for the 15th season in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. A beautiful day weather-wise. Temperatures climbing. Right now, 79 degrees. Rather humid as expected and uh, not too windy today just eight miles per hour right now with the wind most of the flags are fairly limp let's take a look at the visiting team the philadelphia phillies if you're a braves fan or if you're anybody following the national league east you know all about philadelphia they've won the eastern division five consecutive years are led by charlie manuel the all-time winningest philadelphia phillies manager he's done a tremendous job in a short amount of time including a world series title back in 2008 Phillies coming in 12 and 16 this spring with a few ties mixed in the starting lineup 
presented by Visit Florida. Juan Pierre in the leadoff spot, the veteran playing left field, followed by Polanco. Jimmy Rollins is healthy again, always one of the more dangerous shortstops. Jim Tomei, speaking of dangerous, he'll see if he can hold out of that first base job until Ryan Howard gets back from an Achilles injury. Hunter Pence, a very underrated player. So too is Victorino, Ruiz, Galvis, and of course the starting pitcher, Cliff Lee, batting ninth. They'll be going up against Julio Tehran, who's battling for that number five spot in the rotation. He has struggled a bit this spring. Opponents hitting 345 against the Colombian right-hander. A chance to make a statement today against a very dangerous Philadelphia lineup. Well, Julio Tehran got off to a, a terrible start, <laughs> pitching his first start against the Detroit Tigers in that win aided Lakeland ballpark. And he gave up six home runs against that lineup. I mean, that's a pretty dangerous lineup. But since then, I think he's been throwing the ball pretty good. You know, he's only thrown 13 innings coming into today, and he definitely needs a big performance. Beautiful play by Freddie Freeman who no doubt will be earning some gold gloves in the near future as a first baseman. Freddie's just an excellent all-around player. He can do it with the bat, but defensively, he just continues to get better, smothers that ball, gets down on his knees. Great play by Freddie Freeman. Juan Pierre retired, and now Tehran will go to work on one of the top average guys in the National League over the years, Placido Polanco, who laces one in the left field for a base hit, and that could be extra bases. Polanco digging for two as Diaz scoops it up, and Polanco will coast in the second with a one-out double. The Braves defensively, Diaz, Bourne, and Hayward in the outfield. Pastor Nicky and Ugla up the middle. Sutton and Freeman at the corners. And Brian McCann behind home plate. Mike Placido Polanco is one of the most underrated players in the game. He was my teammate back in the day in, in St. Louis. Went on to Detroit and just had a tremendous career at second base there and ended up here in Philadelphia. He's done a great job. Now Jimmy Rollins jumps on the first pitch and pops it up behind third. Pastor Nicky calling for it and makes the grab and foul ground. Two away. Our umpiring crew today led by Sean Barber behind home plate. He'll be calling balls and strikes. Loveless, Siegel, and Gibson rounding out the order. And they'll all be moving around as is typical during spring training. Now Jim Tomei, one of the all-time leading home run hitters and a great insurance policy for the Phillies with the injury to Ryan Howard. Tomei hitting 273 this spring. What a terrific guy to add to your roster. Already filled with veterans, but Jim Tomei is one of the, I would say, professionals of the game. Good role model and just keeps his body in shape and continues to do it. I mean, defensively, May not be as good as he once was, but he can definitely swing the bat and keep this Phillies middle of the lineup strong. If you want a healthy debate with your baseball buddies, pose the question, should Jim Tomei be a Hall of Famer? You see, he's got that magical number in terms of home runs, over 600 of them. Some people say he's still a borderline case for Cooperstown. Tehran. Checks and fires. And we'll do it again. No balls, two strikes. Well, he definitely has my vote for the Hall of Fame. He's done a lot for this game. Uh, one of the good guys of the game on and off the field. And again, he's just one of those great role models for young kids. A five-time All-Star. So many great years in the American League with Cleveland. Pitch outside, one ball, two strikes. You see the career numbers on Jim Tomei, 277 with those 600 plus home runs. See, that's the impressive number to be able to hit 277, you be a power hitter, mm -hmm. over 600 home runs. Wow. I got here about three hours before first pitch today, and one of the first guys. 
doing some extra BP, extra work in the batting cages was Jim Tillman. Again, one of the leaders, you know, here it is. This guy's been around for so long, but he's showing these young guys what it takes to be a true professional. Tehran brings the one two home and it misses low and in. Not surprisingly, a lot of Phillies fans here today at Champion Stadium. Whenever Philadelphia or New York is in town, they bring their fair share of fans. Great crowd on hand. The 2 2 pitch. Hot shot, but they're playing back on the grass is Ugla. And that will retire the side. The one out double by Polanco is all the Phillies can muster. We go to the bottom of the first. No score. Scoreless game as we get you ready for the bottom of the first inning. Champion Stadium, Lake Buena Vista, Florida. Walt Disney World, great place for a ballpark, great place to check in a game. And whenever these two teams meet, it's always that extra special feeling since these two teams have become such great rivals. Freddie Gonzalez now in his second year as the manager for the Atlanta Braves. You see the numbers he put up last season, a team that was Poised to make it to the postseason, just fell short. The Braves trying to rectify that this year. Starting lineup for the Braves, led by Michael Bourne, the ultimate table setter, hitting 288 this spring, followed by Pastor Nicky in the two hole. McCann, Ugla, Freddie Freeman has been absolutely crushing the baseball of late. Diaz, Jason Hayward starting to elevate that batting average. Drew Sutton is at third, and then Tehran, the pitcher. And they'll be going up against one of the best in the business, the left hander, Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee, a Cy Young winner, a guy that has one of the best fastballs and cutters in all of Major League Baseball, and a guy, Brian Jordan, that opposing hitters just never really want to face because you know when you're dealing with Cliff Lee, this is a guy that always brings his A game to the table, rarely has an off night. He does, and he's very aggressive as a pitcher. You got to look to go on and approach him, you know, looking to swing at that first pitch because you don't want to fall behind with Cliff Lee because he is nasty, and he's a guy that. You were a little surprised to see him in the Philly uniform. The Yankees gave him a big deal. The Texas Rangers wanted him back, but he chose Ruben Amaro's Philadelphia Phillies, and he seems happy. He made the All Star team last year, and he continues to get better. Born in the batter's box. Ahead on the count, two balls, no strikes. Michael Bourne, who has been a stolen base king in the National League. The last few years, he's stolen 50 or more three times already in his young career. And he's got a chance to really have a career year. You get the feeling that Michael Bourne can put it all together this year. You know the stolen bases are going to be there, but I think some other things, some other parts of his game will be augmented this season as well. No question in my mind. And I thought the Braves would lock him up for a long-term deal, only signing him. To a one year deal, and uh, I'm, you know, if you're playing on that one year deal, you know, you're a free agent at the end of the season, a six year free agent, you gotta look to have a big year. Would not be surprised to see Michael Bourne have some career numbers. Lazy fly to center for the first down as you look at the Philadelphia defense. Pierre Victorino and Pence in the outfield, plenty of speed to burn with that triumphant. Polanco, Rollins, Galvis, Tomei around the diamond. Ruiz, the veteran behind home plate. Our starting lineups brought to you by visitflorida.com. Here's Pastor Nicky in a good old fashioned battle with Andrelton Simmons, the other shortstop, who, as Brian mentioned in the open, banged up right now. But you talk to everybody from Freddie Gonzalez to Frank Wren and others, this battle is not over. Line drive right at the center fielder. 
Sometimes those are the toughest ones to haul in, Brian, but Victorino does a good job. Victorino has improved every year at center field, and he's become a gold glove center fielder. I love that guy's great energy. But a good swing by Pastor Nicky. He's starting to square balls up, and that was a good pitch by Cliff Lee, and he lined it. So that's a, another good sign for Pastor Nicky hitting off Cliff Lee. Now Brian McCann, who's been hitting off everybody for six years in his major league career, all six seasons as a big leaguer. He has earned a ticket to the All Star game, hitting 271 this spring. One and one. And again, you see Cliff Lee being very aggressive with that first strike to the last couple of batters. You don't want to get two strikes and have to hit that cutter that he throws. McCann, who was born in Athens, Georgia, Bulldog country. Fast roller to second. Galvis who's very short handed over there defensively. Makes the play a one two three inning for Cliff Lee. We had a second no score from Disney. Fans, get your tickets today for the Braves All-Stars versus the Future Stars game on April the 3rd at Cool Ray Field. Come see manager Freddie Gonzalez of the Braves take on former Braves skipper Bobby Cox and the team's brightest prospects. For tickets, go to Braves.com slash Future Stars or call 678-277-0340. Alongside Brian Jordan, Mike Morgan, great to be with you this Sunday afternoon. Braves and Phillies, two teams synonymous with success the last couple of years in the Eastern Division. The Phillies winning the last five division crowns. And the Braves finishing second the last two years. It'll be Pence. Victorino and Ruiz. First pitch in there for a strike. Brian, this to me, Hunter Pence is one of the more entertaining guys to watch as a player and in the batter's box. He could make a cup of coffee nervous the way he moves around. <laughs> a very unorthodox hitter, but he gets it done. He kind of reminds me of Matty Diaz in a way, because Matty is one of those guys like to move his feet around. In that batter's box, but Hunter is always moving, jumping around, but an outstanding athlete and a great move by Ruben Amaro last year, picking him up by the trade deadline from the Astros. This is a guy I thought that the Braves might go after hard, but Philly came from, I, I didn't see Philly coming, and uh, it was just a tremendous pickup for these guys. 2 1 from Tehran. In the air, right, Hayward angling back. And makes the play. Hunter Pence is retired, and that'll bring Shane Victorino to the play. Now for Julio Tehran, Tehran dominating last year in Triple A. 
He was the International League's most valuable player, the rookie of the year. He was on the postseason all star team. He also pitched in the Major League Futures game in Arizona. And then he got the call up a couple of times. As Victorino skies one to left, Diaz will handle it for out number two. But Tehran last season in 144 innings plus in AAA he only gave up five home runs. In 19 and two thirds in Atlanta he gave up four and that's been the trouble spot for him so far this spring. At times he looks dominating but every now and then the gopher ball will do him in. Well you know I, I got to give him a break the first game in Detroit. I mean it was win eight at Lakeland. I played there many times in my career and that ball just blows all over the place. I think you know he gets into trouble late where he loses his endurance. He gets the ball elevated and that's what cost him. I think as he continues to develop and learn to keep that ball down in the zone he's going to be successful. You remember last year he came up in his debut it was against these Phillies in mm -hmm. Philadelphia and pitched five innings and uh, did a terrific job. Considering going into Philadelphia <laughs> and that being your first start. He has an electric fastball which sits in the mid 90s tops out at 97. Line drive right into the glove of Dan Ugla. Tehran sets him down in order. Middle of the second, still no score. Middle of the lineup due up in a scoreless game. Braves and Phillies, bottom of the second. These two teams have been synonymous with success in the National League the last couple of years. And you look at what they've been able to do the last two seasons. The Braves, you know, in another division, they might be able to win it with 91 wins, maybe even 89. But in the East, where the Phillies have reigned supreme, 97 wins in 2010, 102 last season. And of course they've won the last five division titles and the question will be Brian is, is this Philadelphia team good enough to make it six in a row because we know the pitching is there. The hitting seems to be not as lethal as it was a few years ago. Well because of lack of health right now you got Ryan Howard out of the lineup Chase Utley. We don't know what's going to happen with Chase Utley. Both of his knees have given him problem problems the last couple of years. And they're not sure when he's going to return. So we saw him last year get off to a slow start because of injuries. But when it counted, he came through big for him. But you look at every other position, Jimmy Rollins. Uh, to me, you got Polanco, one of the best third basemen, underrated third basemen in the National League. You pick up Juan Pierre, which is a great addition. You got the big Mayberry Jr. This is still a really good lineup for Philadelphia. Ugla cuts and misses. He's first in the Grapefruit League with six home runs. 305 batting average. A terrific spring for the All Star second baseman. But also, Mike, you got to look at 
Remember when the Braves were so great, they had the big three pitchers. You look at this Philadelphia starting rotation, the Holiday, Lee, and you got Hamels. Uh, you got three terrific pitchers right there, so you got to be able to score on these guys. Yeah. yeah. Over vacuumed up by Rollins at short. One away. And it's that nasty cutter that you don't want to see with two strikes, and you see where it just jammed in ugly. Well, Freddie Freeman has had a tremendous spring, capping off a terrific rookie season in which. In many other years he would have been the rookie of the year had it not been for his teammate Craig Kimbrell and you see what Freeman and Ugla have been able to do along with Soriano of Chicago Alfonso Soriano each with six home runs and you brought up a good point we were watching this guy earlier today in batting practice Brian to be able to be hitting the ball so well to all fields this early that is exactly what you want to see for a guy like Freeman oh it's a good sign man. To see him take batting practice and, and really working on driving the ball the other way and then take it right into the game and his three of his three of his four last home runs have been to opposite field. So for me, Freddie's so young, he's just gonna continue to get better. And when you can have power the other way, this guy's gonna be a 30 to 40 home run hitter before it's all said and done. I asked Freeman how he became such a good opposite field hitter. He said playing wiffle ball, that's the only way you can get a home run. Back when he played, they had the fence set up in left field. There was no fence in right, so if you wanted to hit the long ball and wiffle ball, you had to go off of it. Hold on, listening to Jason Hayward and Freddie Freeman, two real close friends. Both of these guys were brought up on wiffle ball. <laughs> I love to see both of those guys go at it in wiffle ball. Now Jimmy Rollins has been busy at short, and he's been flawless thus far. Another assist for the Phillies shortstop. Now, which Southern Major League Baseball team do you believe has a shot at the World Series? You can vote in our poll at css-sports.com and be entered to win a trip to Florida presented by visitflorida.com. Matt Diaz back in a Braves uniform after a, a year away in Pittsburgh. Diaz glad to be back. The team he started with and serves a single in the right field. Something Matty Diaz has been working on all spring, trying to drive the ball the other way. He's only hitting 180. He's been struggling, but the good thing about him, he's a veteran and he's working on certain things in spring. So and that's just a good swing, stand back, get a ball away, and then hit right behind the ball. Good job by Matt Diaz. He's starting to round in the shape. Now Jason Hayward, who has come on of late. Couple of home runs last week. He's got four for the spring. The batting average at 216. And nobody has been working harder with hitting coach Greg Walker than Jason Hayward. A lot of one on one time. Well, Jason just made an outstanding catch the other day, stealing the home run from Abanez, just climbing the wall. And he comes back and hits a home run. He's starting around in the shape. 2 breaking ball is fouled off. Jason seeing the entire Cliff Lee arsenal, the fastball, the cutter, the curve. I talked to Jason earlier. It looks like he's having fun. You know, a lot of people are putting a lot, trying to put a lot of pressure on him to bounce back, but you know, he's he knows this year he's just gonna let his talents take over. He's healthy. He has a big smile as you see this single to the right side. Shoots one. To the right side of the infield. Second consecutive hit off of Cliff Lee. Good at bat by Jason. Fighting off some tough pitches, fouling them off, and gets a pitch down and in where he can handle and pulls it right through the first base, second base hole. Now Drew Sutton, who looks to be poised for a roster spot. As a utility guy. Played in 31 games last year for the Boston Red Sox. He can play all over the place on the infield. Corner outfield spots. 
And that versatility combined with some good play last year and this spring will likely earn him a roster spot. Up the middle. Charging is Galvis. And now to retire the side. Braves get a couple of hits and strand a couple of runners. We move to the third. Still scoreless here from Disney. Food and beverages at Turner Field. Visit Braves.com slash. Three percent off concessions. That's a nice little incentive. Turner Field. Opening day not too far off in the home opener at Turner Field against Milwaukee. In the near future, of course, we'll be. At Kure Field, the Gwinnett Braves home for the Futures game in two days. You can catch that on CSS as well. Galvis, Lee, and Pierre do up for the Phillies here in the third. Tehran with that great step on the fastball for a strike at 93. Freddie Galvis is a pretty good defensive second baseman. Got that slow dribbler, dribbler on Sutton up the middle. Lofts one in the left center. Bourne slows up. One gone. Now this is going to be an important guy. Chase Sutley's knees in question. A lot of people very concerned about how serious that injury is going to be. A lot of people believe it's chronic, so there's really nothing you can do about that. Can't have surgery to fix it. So right now it's a little rehab and rest. Not shot. A comebacker off the bat of Cliff Lee and Tehran takes care of it. Got to have some good ins instincts as a pitcher. Man. Cliff Lee hits a shot. This ball's hit hard up the middle. It's that PFP. Pitchers have to take in spring training every day. Working on those instincts off the mound. Playing good defense. Juan Pierre and his 554 career stolen bases comes to the plate. Got robbed by Freddie Freeman his first time up. They got Pierre and Scott Pacetnik is actually. On the spring training roster, we'll talk about two guys with some wheels now. And you have three potential center fielders if you need it. <gasps> Pierre ahead of everybody on that list by over a hundred. Oh, 
Bobby Abreu was number five. Abreu, I'm sorry. He just got traded from the Angels over to Cleveland. I didn't realize he stole so many bags. Now when he was actually was when he was with the Phillies, he really showed off his wheels and then kind of became a power guy. And now the question is how much is left in the tank as Pierre dribbles one and McCann picks it up in foul ground. Which is probably a good thing because I don't think McCann was going to beat him. Well, I don't know. Brian McCann got out of that squat pretty quick. And the reason he tried to get that ball before it went foul because he knew he had a shot at one. Brian really works hard on his defense and he gets out of there quick. And right now he says I can get him so I'm picking up this ball. <laughs> One two from Tehran is lined to left. Diaz lunging at it and hauls it in for out number three. A nice economical one two three inning for Tehran. He's retired the last eight. Still scoreless here from Disney. Bottom of the third about to get underway the Braves and the Phillies scoreless so far a good pitchers duel between Julio Tehran and veteran Cliff Lee. We are pleased to be joined live now by the Braves dugout former all star second baseman now playing a lot of third base in the left field Martin Prado sometimes hard to keep up where you're playing but that's the versatility you like to show right. Uh, hello guys. Uh, hi. How's everybody doing out there. Everybody's great. How are you. <laughs> I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day to play baseball. How you feeling right. First of all I know uh, you've had a little bit of fatigue like so many guys you had a terrific spring overall spraying the ball all over the place uh, right now. How's the health of one Martin Prado. Well. Um, I was uh, I guess I was uh, working too hard in the last couple of days and uh, just my body just just warming in like a, hey you gotta you gotta take a break um, but you know physically I just feel I feel great just my body just uh, he's in the right spot right now just ready to go and uh, the way I've been uh, just moving around just the left field and and trying to work everything just is everything is just getting you know putting all the pieces together so I feel great right now. Well, that's what I want to ask you, Martin. You know, coming into this season, you expected to be the left fielder, and all of a sudden, you you got to make that transition to third base. How hard is that mentally on you? Well, uh, it's a it's a little bit tough, but um, I'm, I'm I'm just feel like I'm getting used to it. You know, I'm just getting my work done in uh, third base, and uh, you know, trying to work in in. Uh, uh, trying to prepare myself in batting practice, like taking ground balls in third, taking my fly balls, and and, and um, don't get don't get too much work done because that that's what I did last year. I was I worked too much in left field, so I forgot about third and all the positions I can play around the diamond. So uh, it's been great so far, and uh, sometimes it's tough, but um, there's something that I love to do, and and, and being a line out to just give me that strength to. Uh, Come every day and, and and get my work done. Michael Bourne flies out to left after Julio Tehran collects his first hit of the spring. We're joined by Martin Prado in the Braves dugout. Martin, I, I think sometimes people assume that 
you know, they almost look at you guys like robots, but you're a human. You've certainly heard some of the rumors that were out there, possible trade rumors. And I know from a fan standpoint, everybody is glad to see you back in a Braves uniform. And I've always gotten the impression that you're extremely pleased to be in Atlanta. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, it was it, it was hard for me just thinking, like, um, where, where, where are I going to end up tomorrow and where I'm going to go tomorrow. But... Uh, just the support that I got from the fans and my teammates and the coaches stuff and, and everybody just the that I understood that from that point that that trade rumors and that's things that uh, I can real not control so uh, uh, the only the only thing I can control is just uh, uh, put myself in the best shape that uh, I could be for this spring training because it's a lot of expectation for everybody like we got a tough September last year, so uh, we pretty much got over with, and 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 I got so much confidence on myself and on my teammates that we're gonna and and we learn from it, and if we're gonna be in the same spot, we're gonna be in the same situation this year. I think we're gonna we're gonna have that different kind of mindset. So uh, I think it's gonna be pretty good, and and I'm so happy this deal with this because uh, I'm so happy to keep being part of this team that is so much history and so much things going on this team that made me just go keep going and, and get better and better to be part of this team well said as pastor Nicky stings the ball for the second time today gets a base hit out of it two on one out for Brian McCann Martin I you know I looked at your season last year you had a, a great first half and then you get the staff infection and you come back and the Braves trade for Michael Bourne and look like you lost your aggressiveness and a little confidence there in that second half. I mean, you know, looking back at last year, what do you do different, you know, coming into this season? Well, first of all, um, one of the things that just made me change was that, you know, when I, I got that transition just going in left field, I thought, like, okay, now I'm going to be a homer. i got to be an RBI guy because – Pretty much every every single guy in the National League and American League left fielders, they just they just guy just they can drive the ball and get some a lot of RBI. So I was trying to be someone that uh, I couldn't be, but uh, this year I was like I, I'm going to be myself. I, I'm not going to change anything. I just I'm going to play uh, the way I used to play. Just trying to move the runner, hit the ball the other way. So. Uh, it's, it's been so far, so good so far, and, and that's my project here. And, and if it just, if I hit a homer, that's fine. I react inside, but um, everything I'm gonna just trying to hit the ball the other way. Braves starting to hit Cliff Lee, third single of the inning, an opposite field RBI single by Brian McCann, which scores Julio Tehran, one to nothing. Our score, Martin Prado. Our guest from the Braves dugout, Martin. Uh, you're certainly going to play some third this year, and. You'll be working on the infield with one of two guys at shortstop, either Pastor Nicky, who we just saw get a hit earlier this inning, or Andrelton Simmons. Just give us uh, some of your impressions of both those guys. Well, uh, first of all, I was like, when I saw those two guys just working in, and um, I said, man, this, those two guys, they got so much talent, and uh, there's such... I like about them, they just ask a lot of questions. They, they want to learn. They, they want to, like, listen to everybody. So that's a way, just, that's a process that you want to be in because, you know, I, I, I saw Pastor just asking Chipper and all those guys got a lot of experience how to be, you know, consistent and, and to be success, uh, succeed in, the, in this game. And the same way Simon said, he could, they got a great talent and, um, they just they're pretty close to be a great I think they're gonna be a great players man they, they they got everything they got all every single tools and 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 they got a strong mind to be a great 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 players Martin you know last year with Michael Bourne being uh, added to this roster uh, playing center field leadoff hitter have you guys talked this spring training about, you know, what you're going to do different hitting behind him? Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, actually, we, we, we're getting pretty close. We're talking a lot because uh, he's one of those guys who got so much energy. He's so, like, every day he got, 
he 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 got something to say like hey i'm a, i'm <laughs> going to do this you you like it and and we cherish a lot of things and we we talk about hitting and 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 i love it and i guess that i didn't have the the enough time to get to know him last year so the first thing that I, I, I thought, like, hey, I got to talk to this guy, <laughs> this guy. I got to get in this guy's mind. So uh, I guess it's, uh, it's a long process, and, and, and uh, we've been talking a lot in the spin training, and, and we, we, we're coming along, and, and we're getting, I assume we're getting close to the season. We start, like, hey, can we do this? What do you think about this situation? And we even, like, during the game, we're talking, hey, what do you think about this? So communication uh, between me and him, it's, it's been great. And I, get, I guess that, that that's going to give you a heads up. And I'm and, and, uh, hoping that we can keep that communication. And that's going to uh, uh, put me and put me in the right spot and put him in the right spot. So that's what we're going to do. Bouncing ball up the middle off the bat of Freeman and a double play turned by the Phillies. Martin, look forward to seeing that one-two punch of you and Michael Bourne throughout the season. As always, a pleasure to talk to you. Best of luck this season. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for having me. You got it. Martin Prado, our guest. The Braves on the board. One to nothing as we head to the fourth. Braves on top, one to nothing. Don't forget to tune in this Tuesday for a very special Braves spring training game presented by Visit Florida. The Braves travel to Coray Field to take on their future stars, the Triple-A Gwinnett Braves. The auction begins at 7 p.m. right here on CSS. And we'll have a chance to bring that to you. Brian and I will be uh, at Coray Field, a spot that uh, we get a chance to broadcast from a number of times throughout the season. That should be a lot of fun. I know Bobby Cox is very excited. I'm excited. I can't wait to, until Tuesday night to see Bobby Cox managing and uh, against Freddie Gonzalez and just seeing the young kids, you know, we may potentially see all season long. Absolutely. And, of course, guys that eventually could even be in Atlanta this season. You never know. We've learned that the last couple of years that guys that you think are not going to be playing at the major league level so soon because of injuries and other factors yeah, wind up playing there. Come on, you old man. The Phillies fourth. We'll start off with Polanco, then Rollins, then Tome. Tehran goes to work with a fastball strike at 94 miles an hour. Polanco doubled his first time up in the gap in left center. Polanco's one of those tough outs. He protects the plate well. Gets two strikes. He shortens up and just tries to put the ball in play. It's an excellent hitter. And again with injuries to Utley and Howard. It just makes the performance of Polanco that much more important this year. That ball, little chin music. Polanco takes a glare back at Tehran, who's not afraid to pitch inside. Wow, your heart just skips a beat. This late in spring training, last thing you want to do, and especially if you're Charlie Manuel, see one of your top guys go down, getting hit by a pitch. Tehran comes back at 96. He's got one of the best fastballs in the organization, and he's got a plus changeup to go with it. 
Continues to work on that breaking ball. And I think for Julio Tehran, it's more than just the stuff, it's maturity. Just being able to get some more polish. And it's about trust. Trusting his stuff. I mean, he has a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff. But you, you see him in stints of the game just kind of lose it. You know, he gives up a big hit, and you can see him just, you know, lose his confidence there for an inning. That's something he'll learn with maturity, like you said. Payoff pitch, a slicer into the seats. Yeah, when things are going well, Julio Tehran absolutely dominated last year, and then sometimes if he got into some early trouble, it would just compound into a big inning. And that's something a lot of young pitchers battle. And with time, he'll be able to improve on that. Hot shot hit down on the ground by the glove of Sutton. Still a base hit, but a great effort by Sutton at third. That was a great effort just to be able to knock that ball down and keep him from getting a double down the line. So great job by Drew Sutton. I might have to bring my glove to the ballpark just to fend off the autograph towns of one Brian <laughs> Jordan. Philly fans even asking for the autograph. My goodness. Yeah, I gave the Brave had a sign, but not the Phillies had. <laughs> you gotta have your priorities. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Rollins to the plate. 0 for 1. Jimmy Rollins, another guy who has been stymied by injuries through much of his career. When he's healthy, he's one of the top shortstops in baseball. You can definitely see the difference in this lineup without Rollins in it. You know, they miss his leadership and they miss his great plays at shortstop. I think a lot of people would be surprised to know that the Braves actually hit more home runs than the Phillies last year. This Philadelphia lineup, as big as the names are and as potent as it can be, was actually just seventh in the National League in runs scored. Pop up near third. Sutton looking into that sun and almost made a sensational grab. Just out of his reach. But the Braves actually. Finished with 20 more home runs in the Phillies as you see Sutton. Just out of his reach. If he was a 44 long instead of a 44, <laughs> he would have been able to haul that one in. Well, you know what the big difference of the Phillies lineup and the Braves lineup, you know, although the Braves out hit him in home runs, mm -hmm. the Phillies got the hits when it counted. Right. You know, late in the game, they were able to move guys over. And make contact, put the ball in play with a man on third base, where the Braves didn't do that down the stretch. And that was the difference of why the Braves did not make it to the playoffs last year. Definitely wasn't the pitching. Wallen, Rollins draws a walk. And the first two are aboard to see how Tehran responds to some adversity here with the ever dangerous Jim Tomei about to dig in. If both these teams had top five pitching stats last season, you brought up one of the key detributes, uh, attributes, I should say, of the Braves lineup last year, and that's something that they hope to hone in on this season. But what the Phillies have done as their lineup and their offense has diminished a bit, they've made up for it by putting together one of the top trios maybe the best in all of baseball in starting pitching. Well they've taken the, the Braves philosophy of you know having three dominant pitchers and having a pretty good bullpen to get you through. I mean you score two three runs you should win the ball game because it's tough to score two three runs off a of holiday Cliff Lee and Hamels when he's on and he was definitely on last year. You see the Phillies ahead of the Giants and the Padres the Braves fourth in the National League. The 
Phillies don't have Ryan Matson anymore. But they pick up Papelbon. It just seems like whenever Philadelphia loses a key player, they pick up a key player. Well, it's just amazing how aggressive Ruben Amaro is as the general manager for the Phillies. He's been that way over the last three, four years, going after some of the best players available. Tehran trying to bite the outside corner, can't do it. Two balls and a strike. That's the 20th pitch this inning, 42 for the game. Ball. Well, that didn't miss by much. Wow. Tome is one of those, definitely a double play candidate. Well, he can hit 600 home runs. He's not going to outrace you to first base. That's what Tome did last season with runners in scoring position. He's always been coming up big in these kind of spots. Home run cut. <laughs> and it comes up empty. You see, that's a Hall of Fame hit. You know, you got a 3 1 count. You got to take your chances. You take your swings in that position. You're not going to shorten up and just try to put the ball in play. He is trying to change the game. Good pitch by Tehran. And a lot of sync on that pitch. Tehran brings the payoff. And we got a good battle going on right now. Youth versus experience. Tehran and Jim Tomei. Well, before coming into this inning, Tehran was very efficient with his pitches. And a little setback this inning as the bullpen starts to warm up for the Braves. Jim Tomey thought he might have gotten rung up on that pitch. Definitely had the plate. Home plate umpire Sean Barber must have thought it was low. Are you kidding me with that? <laughs> that is strike three. And I don't usually question umpires, you know, doing doing the broadcast, but that pitch was right down Broadway. Are you kidding me? That's where Bobby Cox is on the field getting tossed out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Tomei with an eye like a hawk, all time active career leader in base on balls over 1,700. So now Tehran is in the soup. Sacks are packed with Phillies, nobody out. We were just talking about Tehran, how dominating he can look, and then the big inning strikes. This has the potential to be a big inning with Pence at the plate. Johan Flande is warming up in the Atlanta bullpen. You got to love Hunter's approach there. Bases loaded. You have a pitcher that's struggling. He's walked the last two batters. You have to go up there being aggressive, and he took a hack at that first pitch. Bouncing ball, Freeman going for second, and a great job by Freddie Freeman to get the out at second. A run does score. We're tied at one, but that's a big out for Julio Tehran. That is a good decision by Freddie Freeman. Knowing the speed of your runners, although it's a tough ball to handle by Freeman, gets the high hop, but he knew he still had a chance to throw out the slow running Jim Tobe. And now you still have the double play in order. Now the man from Maui, Shane Victorino. Wow. Victorino's wondering, how was that a strike? And Tomei's was not a strike. Right. 
Shane Victorino a two time all star. Three time gold glove winner. Little looper down the left field line that's going to drop in fair territory. A run will score. Pence slides in the third and the Phillies have the lead two to one. And again, that's the difference of the Phillies and the Braves. Victorino shorten up, just trying to put the ball in play here, and he just slaps this ball down the left field line, drives in a run, and he collects a double. RBI double. Chance to see the speed of Hunter Pence go from first to third. He can fly. <laughs> he can gallop, can he? Those long legs. He's six four, but he has the legs of a power forward in the NBA. Carlos Ruiz will take a shot. Jumps on the first pitch and fouls it away. Tehran has now surrendered three hits, and the Phillies have played to the pair. Here in the fourth. Down to the third. The play is home and it's out of the mitt of McCann. The runners will advance to second and third. And the Phillies stretch the lead to three to one. It looked like from here at first glance the throw was on the money. Yeah, it almost looked like it, it handcuffed Brian McCann here. Brian was expecting the ball on the outside so he could just swipe tag, but he got the ball on the inside. See where it handcuffed him a little bit. He was hoping he'd get that ball on the outer outside so he could just swipe tag Hunter Pence. You know, here in spring training, the last thing you want to see is a collision. So Brown McCann was way out in front of the plate there, but uh, obviously couldn't make the play. And that'll spell the end of Julio Tehran's day. The Phillies have a three to one lead. We'll tell you about the new Braves pitcher when we return. Philadelphia on top, three to one, our score. Julio Tehran was hoping for a statement start today. Was looking very good through the first three innings, but then the big inning for the Phillies here in the fourth, and it's not over yet as the Braves style up the bullpen and bring in Johan Flande, left hander. You see what Flande has done thus far. He's had a very good spring. And Flande is a guy who was in the Philadelphia. Phillies organization pitched with Clearwater and Redding before the Braves picked him up and last year used him primarily as a starter in Triple A. Braves infield not conceding the run playing in. This is where if you're a manager you're a little nervous. You hope you don't have a play at home. A run will score. That'll be all. Galvis, an RBI single. 
The run will be charged to Tehran, and it's now four to one Philadelphia. And this is what the Braves, I mean, Phillies do so good. I mean, runners in scoring position, they put the ball in play, they find holes, and they get it done. Tehran, by the way, through 52 pitches. He'll be charged with the four runs. And now Cliff Lee, the pitcher at the plate. Cliff Lee's not a bad hitter. He's not. He hit the ball absolutely hard up the middle, a bullet. But Tehran made a great play on him. Thing we learned about Tehran last year, Brian, going back to his days at Gwinnett, when he watched guys like Randall Delgado, Vizcaino moving up, I think he started pressing a little bit. And I wonder, because he knows what's at stake, if he might be pressing a little bit this spring. Well, he got off to such a good start. It looks like he was relaxed in the first three innings. But again, we've seen this guy. He has that one bad inning where he may not get a pitch his way. And all of a sudden he loses it. And that's hasn't changed. Lee hits it hard again and this time gets a base hit. An RBI single. And the Phillies fourth continues. It's now 5-1. Did we mention he's a pretty good hitter? Yes, you did. And he has continued to swing a hot bat. Going straight up the middle here. Good effort by Ugly, but just out the reach. And Ruiz scores easily. Now the Phillies have officially batted around now with Pierre coming into play. Juan Pierre 0 for 2. Seems like Juan Pierre has been around forever. He has. And he's done well wherever he's gone to. Chicago was his last stop. Really surprised the White Sox let him get away. Drops down for a squeeze action, a run of score. Pierre out at first. But that's what Juan Pierre does so well. He plays the short game as good as anybody. He plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. And that's why he's lasted so long, Mike. It's a huge pickup for the Phillies. Great bunt, getting the bat out there in front of him. He's putting the ball in play. And it has to be a perfect squeeze with Galvez scoring there. Now Polanco for the second time this inning. He got it all started with an infield single. Then came the two walks by Tehran. An RBI ground out by Pence, an RBI single by Victorino, and Johan Flande has not had much success in relief. And this game was running so smoothly until the Braves hit a wall. <laughs> this top of the fourth inning. Polanco scorches one right center, and Hayward flags it down. Nice to have speed in the outfield. That saves extra bases, but the Phillies do a whole lot of damage. Six run inning. The Phillies lead the Braves six to one. Bottom of the fourth coming your way.
The Phillies on top of the Braves by a score of six to one here at Champion Stadium in sunny Central Florida. As we go back in the Wayback Machine, your opening day lineup for 1991, the worst the first year, the one that got it all started for that glorious decade in Braves history. Deion Sanders leading it all, followed by Jeff Treadway, Ron Gant, David Justice, the speedster, Sid Bream, <laughs> Terry Pendleton, Mike Heath, the catcher, Raphael Belliard at short, and John Smoltz, your opening day pitcher. Pretty good lineup. Not bad. Speaking of John Smoltz, the opening day starter has been announced. That you see Terry Pendleton, now the first base coach, an MVP season with Atlanta. Tommy Hansen named the opening day starter by Freddie Gonzalez. It'll be Hansen, Jurgens, Minor, and Beachy. And Tommy Hansen becomes the youngest starting pitcher on opening day for the Braves since John Smoltz. Well, Tommy's looked really good this spring. Uh, we know this offseason with the shoulder injury, they kind of changed a little, little things in his mechanics. Diaz inside outs one in the air to right. Grab number one. And obviously it really helped him. I mean, he's he looks very comfortable in the changes. And, you know, congratulations to Tommy Hansen. Fans, get your tickets today for the Atlanta Braves 2012 leadoff luncheon. That's Tuesday, April 17th at the 755 Club. The event includes a Q&A session with Braves players, alumni, coaches, and executives. Individual tickets and tables are available, so call 404-494-1020 to purchase today. We've got a pinch hitter. It's Jordan Peraz. Jason Hayward's day is done. Peraz, who's had a very good spring, hitting 333 with a home run. It's a little different after Hayward's first hit batty. He got a single. And a uh, quick change. I hope uh, nothing's wrong with Jason Hayward. Peraz pounds one into the dirt foul. Speaking of opening day starters, by the way, it's been a rough couple of years for the Mets, and I'm not so sure if the news is going to be great this season, but there has been one piece of good news. Johan Santana has been healthy this spring, and it's been announced he's going to be their opening day starter. Well, we remember Johan was one of the best pitchers in the game back in Minnesota. Fortunate for him, had that shoulder injury and Tommy John surgery. But for Mets fans, it's great to see him back out there. Not for Braves fans. <laughs> Swing and a strike three. Cliff lead now with a five run lead. He's dealing. He's starting to lock in. Jordan Perez, two strikes. Like that cutter was up out of the strike zone. Joe Savory warming up in the Philadelphia bullpen. This might be our final look at Lee. A bouncer off the bat of Sutton. And the Braves go down quietly in the fourth. Out of the fifth we go. Phillies six and the Braves one.
Hey, fans, keep up to date with everything CSS. Interact with us and our hosts on Twitter or Facebook. And for current schedules and program information, go to css-sports.com. And you see both of our Twitter accounts, a number of people during our stay here in Orlando sign up and uh, follow Brian Jordan and myself. And we'll look forward to hearing any of your questions or comments throughout the season. We'll be back with you again on Tuesday for the Braves future stars game that'll be played at Kure Field the home of the Gwinnett Braves very nice stadium if you haven't been out there yet You're watching us right now in the state of Georgia should be a lot of fun Bobby Cox will be managing the futures team Flande fires a breaking ball and it catches the outside corner for a strike to Jimmy Rollins and as you see Jordan Peraz the new right fielder taking the place of Jason Hayward Chopped to third. Sutton will guide it across. Freeman will apply the tag for at number one. Freddie Freeman getting some work over there at first base. <laughs> <laughs> the best of throws from his infielders. You know, Albert Pujols was a good fielding first baseman. He's out of the National League now. When you start thinking of gold gloves, and I think Freeman's going to have several of them before his career is done. He's got to be one of the leading candidates right away. Not just gold gloves, but all-star starts. You got Prince Fielder going to the American right. League. You got Albert Pujols. So it's a good time for Freddie Freeman to, to make that all-star appearance this year. You know, predictions are like belly buttons. Everybody has one, but you don't really know why. But I'll go out. And say one anyway. <laughs> oh, think about that. I like that. I'm sitting there thinking about it. <laughs> a little philosophy for you on a Sunday afternoon. But I, I, it's, it's not worth the uh, sheet of paper that I write it on. I think Freeman is going to hit 25 home runs this season. I really think that the way he's seeing the ball, the way he's hitting the ball so well to all fields. Freddie Freeman, a guy who a lot of people thought was not going to be able to supply the power. They thought he'd be a good hitter, just not a good power hitter. I think you're seeing he's going to be both. Well, I up you five home runs. I'm thinking oh. he's going to hit 30. Going this for year. 30. Yes, I am. Putting a lot of pressure on. I only hit 21 last year. Mm -hmm. You know, nine more. He's feeling comfortable going the other way now. Tomei, no stranger to the long ball, but a nice job by Diaz to flag it down and left. Good play here by Matty Diaz. Going a long way in the gap. Tomei has power to all fields. Now Hunter Pence slaps one foul out of play. Want to remind everyone that Visit Florida is the presenting sponsor of Atlanta Braves spring training on CSS. Unleash your Florida side at visitflorida.com. He's Brian Jordan. I'm Mike Morgan. Great to be with you here at Champion Stadium. 15th year the Braves have called this home. And 15 years ago, the first home run in this ballpark was hit by one Fred McGriff. Hunter Pence 0 for 2 in RBI. Long rangy right handed batter. A lot of people didn't think Hunter would be a good major league player with that unorthodox stance, but he's been so consistent. You can't find many holes in his swing. Two and two. There's a very strong arm in the outfield. Good speed. As we saw him go first to third in that third inning. Fourth inning, I'm sorry. Played his college ball at University of Texas Arlington. 
Got the old school look with the pants up. Long socks. That's ball four. A two out walk. Did I not say he's very patient at the plate? He is indeed. <laughs> Hunter Pence becoming one of the better outfielders in all of Major League Baseball. What a big pickup that was by the Phillies. Now Victorino. He singled in a run his last time up. I really like Victorino. You know, when Jimmy went down with an injury, they moved him up to the leadoff guy. I mean, he could beat you with the long ball, but we saw him just slap the ball in left field and with runners in scoring position. He's one of those gritty players, not afraid to speak up. Not afraid to send a message by running the bases and trying to take out second baseman and short stops. Plays the game hard. All of a sudden, Flande has lost the strike zone. And he'll lose it on a four pitch walk to Victorino. Back to back walks. He's thrown six consecutive balls one day has now this Phillies team last year 102 wins and the last two years have had tremendous regular seasons but you ask any hardcore Philadelphia fan and they'll so they'll tell you they've been disappointed in the final result which has been short of the World Series well Mike I got to tell you my story last year when the Phillies came into town that last series and uh, I went up to Charlie Manuel and I said, you don't want to beat the Braves here and have to play the Cardinals <laughs> in the playoffs. And he looked at me and said, we just lost eight out of our last nine <laughs> games. We have to win here in, in Atlanta to have some momentum going in the playoffs. Well, it ended up they ended up winning. Braves didn't make it. Cardinals made it and the Cardinals took them out and went on to win it all. Yes, they did. One of the more unorthodox paths to a World Series championship. They were really all but dead and buried. Yes. In September. Mm -hmm. They scratch and claw their way. It came down to the final day of the regular season. And of course, they needed some help as well. 0 2 pitch off the plate. And it was funny. I remember being in St. Louis last year and I talked to Albert Pujols. Because he was coming to my golf tournament, and Alvin was like, "Oh, I'll be there, man. There's no way we're making it to the playoffs." <laughs> and sure enough, I, I looked at him and said, "Hey, you never know, man." And sure enough, they made it, win the World Series, and he missed my golf tournament because of it. <laughs> what kind of loyalty is that? Uh, I know you picked the World Series over the golf tournament. Gotta have your priorities, Albert. <laughs> Albert now an angel. Don't know if the Cardinals are gonna have the same magic. Without Albert Pujols. And right now without Carpenter. And he starts the year off on the DL as the one two pitch is hammered in the right center. A base hit. This is still a run. Carlos Ruiz. And the Phillies now on top seven to one. Oh, you hear the booba birds out here. Atlanta Braves fans booing and the Philly fans are cheering. Good piece of hitting by Ruiz. Finding the gap in right field. Victorino going first to third. You can do worse than Carlos Ruiz as a hitting catcher. He's one of the better ones in the league. And one of the better catchers. Mm -hmm. Look at who he's catching on a daily base of Holiday, Cliff Lee, and Hamels. Doing a tremendous job. You've got Galvis at the plate. Cliff Lee's day is done as I see Scott Putsednik has grabbed a bat. He's on deck. Two on, two outs. Phillies up 7 1. 
Infante really struggling with his control this inning. He's leaving that fastball up. I don't know whether he's getting fatigued or just losing his command altogether. Up the middle, tough hop for Pastor Nicky, who still makes the play. Well, it was a little more dramatic than he or Johan Flande had hoped, but it's still effective. A 6 4 force out for out number three. Philly is able to plate an insurance run here in the fifth. We're halfway home. Philadelphia leading Atlanta 7 1. Set to go in the bottom of the fifth with the Phillies leading the Braves by a score of seven to one. Braves fans, the Braves take on their division rivals, the New York Mets, Monday, April the 16th through the 18th. Great deals like Coca-Cola two for 30 Tuesdays and the SunTrust Business Fan Special. Get your tickets at Braves.com slash tickets or call 1-800-745-3000. The Braves will start off the inning with a pinch hitter. It'll be Martin Prado, who we just talked to. And I like to think that's going to provide good karma for Prado, <laughs> who's had a good spring overall. Martin Prado joining us a couple of innings ago. And it's always a joy to talk to Martin Prado because I can't think of a more positive attitude a major leaguer could put on display day in. And day out than this guy always has a smile on his face. Just happy to be out here playing the game of baseball. Prado with a look back on that delayed call. One ball, one strike. Martin Prado has been among the Grapefruit League leaders and hits and batting average this entire month. The new pitcher for the Phillies is a left-hander, Joe Savory. Cliff Lee, very effective. Tell you what, you face Justin Verlander and Cliff Lee in back to back days. That's almost unfair for spring training. <laughs> right through the hole, a textbook Martin Prado base hit. That's unfair, making a tough pitch right there, and Prado just slaps at the right field for a single. Just gets it done. Great hands. That's a part of his game. He said he wants to return to drive that ball the other way. Who needs to be a home run hitter because you play the outfield? Braves will hit plenty of home runs this year. Just get more men on base or timely hitting. Michael Bourne. A couple of flyouts. Martin Prado was right on about Michael Bourne. He just has that energy. He loves to have fun. Loves to come to the ballpark. And you never know what's going to come out of his mouth. Talking baseball, just having fun. Trying different things.
The Braves got Michael Bourne from the Astros in exchange for Jordan Schaefer, Juan Abreu, Paul Clemens, and Brett Overholzer. That deal was made back on July 31st, right at the deadline. And when you look at it, what the Braves have really been missing, you got to go back to Raphael for a call about six years ago to find the last time the Braves really had a true prototype leadoff hitter. And Bourne draws a walk. Two on, nobody out for Tyler Pastor Nicky. Battling for that shortstop job and we had a chance to catch up with Braves general manager Clyde Wren earlier and ask him about the battle at shortstop. We have a line of four young shortstops that are going to be very special. Uh, Pastor Nicky's the first one in that line and we felt he was ready. He's hit over 300 last year at two levels, double A AA and triple A, which is a good indicator and he's very athletic. I think the, the big thing about Tyler, everyone talks about him being a young Jack Wilson. And when Jack Wilson, you know, came on the scene in Pittsburgh, he was the best, one of the best young athletic shortstops in the game. Can make all the plays, offensively has some uh, strength in his bat, and that's, that's how we see Tyler. Comments from Frank Wren, Braves general manager, who's got a couple of uh, boys that play baseball over at Georgia Tech. But you can tell Frank is excited about both Pastor Nicky and Simmons. Meanwhile, the count on Pastor Nicky, two balls, no strikes. And speaking of which, you just saw him on tape. We'll have a chance to catch up with Frank Red momentarily. The count now 3-0 and on Pastor Nicky, who singled his last time up, one for two today. Braves with a chance for a big inning here. You know, Pastor Nicky's first at bat, he really squared up the ball straight away center field, and it's a line drive his second at bat. Oh. He was not able to handle it. A four pitch walk for Pastor Nicky. The sacks are packed with Bravos. Nobody out for Brian McCann as we welcome one of our esteemed guests every year during spring training. Braves general manager Frank Wren. Frank, how are you? Good, Mike. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Uh, life could be no better than being here. Spring training every year. Always a good time. Great crowd on hand and a chance to uh, watch another one of those final tune-ups before we get to opening day. I know you're like everybody else kind of chopping at the bit. What have your impressions of spring training thus far been? Well, we've had a couple different seems like we've had two seasons in spring training the first 10 11 days we didn't play very well and yeah, I think guys were rounding into shape and we were one in 10 at one point and we've really played good baseball for the last two weeks and I think we've shown the kind of team we can be and they, the bats have really wakened up and we've pitched better and we've done a lot of things uh, much better than we were doing very early and I, I think the guys are ready to go north they're, they've uh, for the last two or three days I think they've felt like they're ready. Well, Frank, are you guys settled with what you have out there on the field now, or may we see some uh, surprise changes just before the start of opening day? Well, I think we're we're down to the last couple spots. Uh, we made the trade today, and we uh, acquired Juan Francisco from Cincinnati, and I think that gives us a little more depth on the corners. Uh, it also uh, allows us. Uh, that's kind of one decision that's made. Now we, uh, you know, we still have to make our decision at shortstop and one more place in the bullpen. McCann pops it up a mile high. On the infield. Nobody going to be able to advance on this one. As Rollins takes care of it for the first out, and that'll bring up Dan Ugla. How about this guy, Dan Ugla? You know, there's a couple of numbers that I am extremely confident will be improved from last year. Jason Hayward's 227, Martin Prado's 260. We know he's a better hitter than that. And if Dan Ugla can just have an average first half combined with what he did in the second half, we know he's better than a 233 hitter. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. I think the three things you just talked about, you know, I think we we know Martin's going to bounce back. We've seen Jason make great strides this spring. And I think Danny just smoothing out his season and having a, a good first and second half. Another pop up in foul ground. And again, nobody going to be able to move on that one either. 
Now the Braves trying to avoid squandering a golden opportunity here and a good guy to have at the plate with Freddie Freeman. You were saying, Frank? Yeah, no, I think we, you know, Danny's not going to have half like he had last year in the first half, we don't believe. And, you know, he's uh, really swung the bat well down here. I, I would say of the home runs he's hit, he's hit twice as many that would have been out, except we were, seemed like we were going into the wind for about two weeks there, and he crushed some balls. Uh, that would have normally been out. So he's been very hot all spring and swung the bats and had his had his timing. Uh, and then Freddie Freeman as well. Freddie had a mm -hmm. three-day stretch where he hit five home runs, and uh, I think he's using the whole field very well. So is Jason. So there's a lot of positive things going on. So you take a look at Freddie's home runs from last week. It's like the way he's going opposite field with so much power. And to me, we were talking earlier, Mike, I think he's going to be a 30, 30 home run guy this year. Well, Brian, I think that's his key. When he goes, uses the whole field and he doesn't get pull happy, he is really a tremendous hitter, and, and he makes he, he makes the defense really think, because they can't punch him one way. Hot shot smothered by the second baseman, and he goes to first for the out. Frank, it's your call. You can hang around for an extra half inning, or you can uh, go for door number two. <laughs> well, I'll hang around <laughs> with you for a little bit longer. That's okay. We'll hold uh, Frank Red over for another half inning. The Braves unable to capitalize. Phillies on top, 7-1 to our score. Phillies on top of the Braves, seven to one, as we get ready for inning number six. College baseball in full swing on CSS, with over 80 live college baseball games featuring the top-ranked teams in the country. Tune in next Friday for a spectacular ACC matchup as the Red Hot eighth-ranked Hurricanes take on the North Carolina Tar Heels. That's live at 7 p.m. on CSS. Mike Morgan alongside former Atlanta Brave Brian Jordan, Braves general manager Frank Wren joining us, and as I'm mentioned earlier got to give a little bit of a plug to the the younger Wrens two of which are playing for Georgia Tech they just had a big series against Duke yeah they're playing Duke uh, they swept a doubleheader from Duke yesterday first time in about I think 30 some years they swept both ends of a doubleheader uh, and then uh, they're playing today and last I heard they were tied in about the fourth so uh, so far so good Frank I got to ask where did he get the speed from is from you or the wife uh, probably my <laughs> wife. Yeah, well, we both could run a little bit. She ran track, and I was a center fielder as well. So, okay, good. so we both had a little bit of speed. <laughs> J.C. Boscon is the new catcher, and Johnny Venters is the new pitcher for Atlanta. Getting ready for another key stretch with that great Atlanta bullpen. Johnny Venters, Craig Kimbrell, Eric O'Flaherty, and of course, don't forget about Chris Medlin. I, it's hard to say if there's any team in Major League Baseball that can match those four, let alone three. Well, we think Chris is really going to be a great addition out there because he, you know, he has the ability to get lefties and righties out very well, and and he's such a uh, great athlete, defending his position uh, as well as holding runners. Well, Frank, I got to ask you about. You know the signing of Levon Hernandez, and mm -hmm. uh, you know I looked up in the paper and I saw that trade, and I was like, "Where did that come from?" 
And how do you see, you know, utilizing him as a starter or possibly a long relief guy? Our, our goal with him, and we, and we had interest in him over the winter, each of the last two winners actually, is to be that 12th man on a staff. He can be a swing man. He can do a lot of different things for you. Uh, he can be an emergency starter if you get rained out in the second inning of a game and all of a sudden tomorrow you've got a double header and you need a spot starter. You know, lots of different things can happen. Uh, and so he gives you that length to your bullpen that's valuable. And Levon knows how to pitch. I mean, he can he can get through a lineup pretty easily. Pierre just throws the bat out at that one, and it dumps right down inside the chalk. A stand-up double, and literally just doing everything he can to reach that pitch from Johnny Benders. Putting the ball in play is so important, and you, you look at what Pierre can do. You look at the center fielder here in Philadelphia. We saw him do it early, hit the double down the line. I mean, these guys just get it done. Well, Juan Pierre for a long time has been one of the hardest guys in the major leagues to strike out. Uh, he's always had a knack of putting the ball in play, and with his speed, that's his game. Mm -hmm. Frank, what about the talk of because these guys are so valuable last year you play in I think the number was 55 one run games you, you lead baseball in extra inning games. So obviously the bullpen's going to be taxed more than it ordinarily would with those circumstances. But the importance of making sure these guys don't run out of gas in late September. How do you fight against that. Well the biggest thing we can do is get uh, deeper outings from our starters. You know we need our starters to get into seventh and eighth more often than they did last year. A lot of times we had a lot of five and six innings outings and then turn it over the bullpen and that really taxes you when you use four or five pitchers a night. We got to the point where we're getting consistently seven innings and our young pitchers have got to grow into that role. I mean there's a lot of them out there you know whether it's minor beachy uh, you know Huddy's able to do that on a regular basis. Uh, Tehran Delgado as they come along Tommy Hansen. We just got to get more innings out of them and, and that's going to be one of the keys to our success not only overall as a team but our bullpen staying healthy. Well speaking of Tehran and Delgado we know they're battling for that number five spot and talked to Freddie earlier with those two off days early in the season. Will that affect the outcome of these guys. Will they start out in triple A and get another start under their belt continue to build that endurance. Well the, the way it, the schedule works we've got to use our fifth starter I think the sixth game of the season. So we've got it we, we can't send them out to the minor leagues because of the rules. We, they have to be out at least 10 days and so with mm -hmm. it being the sixth game of the season we're kind of caught by that rule. So we've got to use the fifth starter right away and, and so one of these guys will uh, make a decision probably tomorrow uh, and set our club uh, from that standpoint and, and uh, you know then the other guy will go to triple A and continue to start and get stretched out and be ready. You know, for the next opportunity. But does that leave Levon available for that six day into the six starts in the same? It could. I mean, we could do that, but I think we've we've primed him, and when we signed him, we talked to him about it would be emergency starts only. And okay. since this is a regular turn, I think we want to go with one of those kids and, and continue their development and let Levon stay in that role because you never know. You go to New York for three days in April, mm -hmm. you oh, may yeah. <laughs> you may have a rain delay in the second inning and need somebody to come in and pitch five and, and that very well could be Levon opening day. Frank it's that time of year where pretty soon like you said rosters are going to be finalized. Do you envision without uh, tipping your hand too much here. Do you envision any more possible moves here before opening day. Well we've we've got a couple other things we're talking about. Good play. That side is retired on a great play, robbing Orr of a base hit. We're going to answer that question off the air with uh, Frank Grant. Let you go. I know you got other things to do. Frank, so thank you so much for the time. All right, guys, take care. All right, thanks.
We've reached the bottom of the sixth. The Phillies leading the Braves seven to one. Cliff Lee got the start for Philadelphia. Pitched very well. Julio Tehran the start for the Atlanta Braves. Don't forget to get your opening day tickets today. Braves and the Brewers on Friday, April the 13th, presented by PNC Bank. Go to Braves.com slash tickets for more information or call 1-800-745-3000. Diaz jumps on the first pitch and fouls it. Wholesale changes defensively for Philadelphia. All over the outfield and the infield. We'll get you up to speed on those. In the meantime, it'll be Diaz, Peraz, and Sutton do up. Six, seven, and eight. And the Braves lineup is Diaz. Scorches one into the gap in right center field and off the wall. Matty Diaz will cruise in a second with a stand-up double. Wow, we talked about Matty working the other way, practicing, you know, trying to make some uh, adjustments down here in spring training. And it looks like all those adjustments are starting to work out. Got back in the, what was it the first inning? Second inning, he hit a single to right field, and now he hits a double off the wall in right center field. So I think Mike he is starting to feel good about his timing <laughs> and where he is right now in spring training. Now Peraz cuts and misses off speed. Braves with seven hits, the Phillies with seven. But Philadelphia behind a six run fourth inning has the lead. Our thanks again to Frank Wren for joining us in the booth and Martin Prado on the field. Later on, you'll hear from Braves manager Freddie Gonzalez. And we also hope to be joined by Freddie Freeman. Carras came in the game back in the fourth inning after Jason Haywood had won it back in a single. Pops it up, short left. One gone. Back to the Wayback Machine opening day lineup for the Braves back in 2005. And how in the world could you hit Brian Jordan? Eight? That is that is disrespect <laughs> for Brian Jordan. For old Mondesi. Well, you know what? With a call leading off and you needed the speed in the back end of the lineup. So that's why I was hitting eighth. <laughs> I, I don't recall you being a punch and Judy hitter. I, I well, you know, in. back, you know, late in my career, I was just trying to put the ball in play. I was fighting for my average. I wanted to be a career 300 hitter. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I guess you hit just about everywhere from second to eighth. I did. Anybody ever put you in the leadoff spot? I did. I hit leadoff there for a minute Up in St. Louis. Sutton flies out. This has been the story of the Braves thus far today. Runners on base, but unable to get them across. And that's something we go back and talk about the difference between Phillies hitters and Atlanta Braves hitters. When they get guys on, they put the ball in play, they find holes, they shorten up their swing where the Braves try to swing for that home run. And a lot of times you leave those runners out there stranded, as they did in late September. J.C. Boscan for the first time at the plate today. Boscan, the story remains the same. Sensational defensive catcher, a guy who still trying to find his way at the plate. Who's been in the Braves organization for several years now. Great clubhouse guy. And usually begins the year anyway in Triple A. I have to give Greg Walker a lot of credit though, but Boscon has been swinging the bat pretty good in spring. He start he went back to using his hands, and that's something that Greg Walker said he was working with JC on. Everybody's di different uh, with Boscon. It's using his hands. When you hear scouting reports, as Boscon. Drives one into the alley in left center field, and that's going to make it all the way to the wall. A base hit. It'll score a run as Diaz trots home, and the Braves 
Get their first run since the third inning. It's seven to two. And that's the hands I'm talking about. We hadn't seen that in Gwinnett all year last year. And he just looks like a totally different hitter down here in spring training. Stayed behind the ball, used his lower half. And that was a nice, easy swing. And he was able to hit the ball out there to the warning track. Well, you just mentioned something that's really big with Greg Walker, and it it also has to do with Jason Hayward, and that is using that lower half. Last year, Jason Hayward, all upper body in that swing. Trying to get his lower body involved. That'll be a storyline throughout the season as Bourne grounds out to end the Braves' sixth. But Atlanta plates a run. We head to the seventh inning. Philly seven, Braves two. We'll chat with Braves manager Freddie Gonzalez when we return. Nice morning, Scott. Hi. And a morning of tiny voices crying out, feed us. Joined by Brave skipper Freddie Gonzalez. Uh, Freddie, uh, spring training, always a chance to get some answers to a lot of probing questions out there. Do you feel like you found at least most of the answers you were looking for? I think so. Uh, you know, next couple of days we got a couple of more uh, questions that uh, – that we need to uh, need to find out about, but uh, I feel uh, like right now I feel pretty good about our club. Freddie, as far as the veterans out there, I mean, are you comfortable with you know health? Of course, you know you lose uh, Chipper at the beginning of the season, but hopefully he's gone for a short time. But as far as the veterans on this team, do you feel like you got the leadership, you got the health? that you want going into the season. Absolutely. I think guys like Hinsky and, and um, Matt Diaz and, and Ross and, you know, uh, uh, McCann is a veteran. I know sometimes we don't think of it <laughs> when we, we talk about those uh, guys, but uh, here's a guy who's six, seven years in the league, so uh, he is uh, he's going to be a veteran. He is a guy that's going to take over the team when Chipper, uh, after the 2012 season, he's going to be the guy for 2013. Uh, and, and he's taken that role in the last couple of years. He's taken more and more of, uh, of that that role of being that leader in the clubhouse. Freddie, I, a lot of people, obviously, when they think Atlanta Braves, they think of that great pitching. I think a lot of people would be surprised to know you guys were third in the National League last year in home runs. And just watching spring training, I mean, you see the potential of guys like Freddie Freeman, Jason Hayward. Of course, we know about Dan Ugla. This could be a team that hits a ton of home runs again in 2012. That's got to be exciting. It, it, it is, and uh, you're absolutely right. Danny Ugla is going to be a guy who's going to be hit 30 home runs plus every year. So he's done it every year. He's, he's been in the big in the major leagues, and he's done stuff that no other second baseman has ever done in the history of the game. I think a Jason Hayward type year, a, a year that we know that he could, he could have, a year that he knows that he could have, it's going to be big for us. It's almost like going out and getting a big, a big, big free agent. Uh, he's been working great with Greg and and Scott. They've had a great relationship. I think uh, he trusts those guys to to get him over the hump. And you see some great at bats. So if anything else, nothing with uh, with mechanically. You see a, a Jason Hayward who's aggressive at the plate and ready to hit uh, uh, every at bat. Hey, Freddie, I know you, you, you're watching Tavon today. You got Delgado, those guys fighting for that fifth spot. But I noticed at the beginning of the year, in the first two weeks, you got a couple off days. 
do you possibly see maybe going with a four-man starting rotation to start the season? We could go four-man, and not not really a four-man because you're going to have to come back after um, after we come back from Houston. Uh, we go about nine days in a row, about uh, so. Uh, uh, we're gonna have to use a five man so uh, you could bring in uh, a guy like Tommy Hansen back on his normal day and then bump uh, bump a guy but you really can't skip him uh, right. I think uh, the, the fifth guy could go uh, as much as uh, three or as little as three times in the month of April and a possibility of four times a month of April and and that's all we were asking about those guys that number five guys give us three or four starts in April Huddy is on uh, on track to uh, to pitch he's gonna pitch here tomorrow against the Mets the first time he's gonna go two innings and then he's on schedule and hopefully uh, and I don't foresee any any um, any setbacks he is going to pitch in one of those games at the end of April against the Pirates whether it's uh, I think we can play a wraparound series down there whether it's a Saturday Sunday or Monday depending on uh, how we need him so uh, so that number five guy only is going to pitch it three to four times well Freddie we know you and the guys are just like us chomping at the bit for opening day we look forward to that look forward to seeing you in a couple of days uh, at Cool Ray Field in Gwinnett too for the futures game that's going to be exciting and uh, we're going over there and I think uh, whoever came up with the idea it's a uh, it's a cool idea get people in Gwinnett get to see a major league club and also get to see some of the young up-and-coming uh, brave stars and and it's going to be nice to uh, have have the skipper in uniform again and and managing I know he's got a big workout tomorrow he's going to go over the science form and and so uh, it's going to be fun <laughs> Freddie thank you so much for the time we'll talk to you soon all right thank you guys. good luck man Freddie Gonzalez kind enough to join us today the hit parade continues. Frank Wren, Martin Prado, among others, hope to be joined by Freddie Freeman later on. Braves trailing it 7-2. to two. Rough go of it for Julio Tehran, who gave up four earned in three and a third today. John Mayberry Jr. at the plate. And he lines one in the center for a base hit. John Mayberry Jr. is one of those talented young prospects. We saw him last year back in Atlanta, hit a huge home run to bring Philadelphia from behind to beat the Atlanta Braves. Corey Guerin, the Braves pitcher who has been kind of hot and cold this spring, trying to latch on to one of those final bullpen spots. This is a big outing for him. I mean, he's struggled this last couple of times out. He finished strong. For a young guy like Corey, you see Lebon Hernandez get picked up off the waivers, and well, he was released and signed by the Braves, and it puts added pressure on him to come out here today and perform well. The side armor. As it fouled off by Brian Schneider. Mike Morgan with Brian Jordan here at Champion Stadium. Spring training coming to a close. One more game tomorrow against the Mets. And the Futures game that we'll be bringing to you on Tuesday. As always, we're happy to bring you spring training here on Comcast in full high definition. Spectacular HD. That's right. <laughs> We're talking with Frank Reno. I don't know if you caught it, but Levon Hernandez is a guy that he was trying to get for the last couple of years. Yeah. That kind of surprised me. Well, you know, he, one thing about this organization, they they love veterans and they love guys that have been there, done that. And we know Levon Hernandez has been around the block as Brian Schneider, a longtime catcher, been in the league over a decade, swings and misses for strike three. One of those nasty sinkers to a left hander. The ball just dropped off the table inside. It's a bad pitch to go after. One on two outs. Just to finish the thought on Hernandez. I mean, really, you've got nothing to lose. He's not 
not at the stage of his career where he carries a high price tag anymore. You know that he's going to be nothing but an asset in the clubhouse. He's been in any critical spot possible, whether it's regular season or postseason, and he knows his role on this team. He's going to be a guy that whatever they ask him to do, spot start, bullpen, he'll be there for him. And it's best to have him on your team because he always beats the Braves when he pitches against them. <laughs> That's another good point. That one shot through the hole on the right side, and the Phillies now trying to provide a little two out lightning. Ninth hit of the day for Philadelphia. Luis Montanez with that single. I think another thing the Braves learned, unfortunately, the hard way last year how quickly a deep pitching staff can turn into a vulnerable one when you. Think about all the injuries to Tommy Hansen, to Jair Jurgens last season. I mean, that really handicaps you. And if you don't have depth, not just great young arms in AAA, but major league depth, it can come back and bite you. It's a dribbler, a fair ball, and an easy play at first base. Side retired, stretch time here in Central Florida. Phillies in the lead, 7-2. It's 7 2 as we look back at how we got to this point. First off, some great defense by Freddie Freeman at first base. We've seen that all spring long. Everything was going pretty well early going. Brian McCann, an RBI single. The Braves would score just one run through the first three innings, then a monstrous fourth for the Phillies. Fielder's choice scoring Hunter Pence. Hunter base hit there. The Phillies. Already with nine hits today, and in that one inning alone, Polanco, Rollins, Tome, Galvis, and yes, even Cliff Lee with an RBI single. They would all reach in that frame. And Braves still trailing by that score. Now it's seven to two. Been a lot of fun for us, so Brian. We enjoy coming out here every year. A lot of interesting storylines, and I think maybe the most uh, intriguing thing has been to watch the evolution of some of those really good young players and pitchers and uh, to me Freddie Freeman has kind of stolen the show thus far this spring. He has and uh, this is the guy that we had fortunate enough to see it down in Gwinnett develop and you know to follow his career thus far he continues to improve and get better and for us to see a young guy like Tyler Pass and Nicky come up last year and, and do well at triple A level has a chance to start here at the beginning of the season you know also watching him you know, start out slow in spring training, but he's starting to come around and relax and play like we saw him in Gwinnett. So hopefully he'll continue to do that and be the opening day starter for the Atlanta Braves. He's had three quality at bats so far today. He stung the ball well on a line drive out to center his first time up, single to right a second, and then drew a walk in the fifth. Three one count. I would love to see him be aggressive here with a hard swing or take a walk. <laughs> and that one nowhere near, so he'll gladly take first. Third time today, Pastor Nicky has reached. He's really made a statement here the last week, week and a half. Durango will get his first at bat of the day, facing a new Philadelphia Phillies pitcher. Jeremy Horst. 
The numbers on horse through four games thus far this spring. A hefty lefty. A chance to talk to this young man before the game. Durango. He's having a great spring. Opening some eyes. Kind of. You can kind of compare with Jose Costanza. Great speed from the right side. He's an excellent center field. And he's in that mix mm -hmm. for that outfield spot. A good take for Durango. 2 0 count. But behind five runs. Got to be patient in this situation. Durango. Fast rower to short, glove nicely, and the Phillies turn two. Good play by Galvis with the back end. Galvis, who started at second, now at short to Orr to Nix. This ball was hit hard up the middle. Good job by smothering that ball and an easy flip to Pete Orr. He made it look easy. Dan Uglis still in the game and still in search of his first hit of the day. Tremendous spring for Uglis. Six home runs. Uglis was putting on a display in batting practice. We were walking in that gate near right center field, and all of a sudden you hear all these thuds off the scoreboard in left center. Those were. Tape measure home runs off the bat of Ugla. So much power. You can't make forearms like that, can you, Brian? <laughs> You're just born with those bad boys. You are. It takes a lot of hard work. <laughs> like sitting around the house using the dumbbells all day <laughs> long. I don't think there's a enough time in the gym that I could ever get forearms resembling those. <laughs> Deuces wild to Ugla. Freddie Freeman is on deck. Well, the longer Freeman stays in the game, the longer it's going to take for that interview. Surely Freddie's aware of that and he'll pull himself out. <laughs> well, we got to remember, he started out the spring. In the spring, getting hurting that knee, so he missed a lot of at bats. And uh, he's such a, Freddie's such a good competitor; he wants to make up those at bats and get as many as he can. High cheese, Uglas swings through it for strike three, and the Braves are done in the seventh. Out of the eighth, Phillies seven, Braves two.
Phillies 7, Braves 2 as we enter the 8th. Tune in every Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern time for SEC Baseball Weekly. The most complete coverage of SEC College Baseball in the South. The latest news, highlights, and interviews with the biggest coaches and brightest stars. That's SEC Baseball Weekly each week on CSS. New pitcher for Atlanta, Dusty Hughes, a left-hander wearing number 70 today. When we've reached that point of the game. We're going to start seeing some more high numbers. You never had those high numbers, did you? You know what? Started my career on with those high numbers. Did my you? first big league camp. I'm trying to forget those high numbers, though. You, did, you didn't keep a high number jersey for. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Hughes actually spent time in the majors in 2009-2010 with the Kansas City Royals. And as you see, Scott Pudsednik, who not too long ago swiped 70 bases back when he was playing with Milwaukee. 70 in one season. Oh, pretty good spring for the Phillies. 327. This is a guy that left the game for a while and came back just a couple of years. He was home, sitting on the sofa, and decided, I want to play again. <laughs> and he got the opportunity to come back and uh, not doing too bad. Last season, Dusty Hughes. Appeared in 15 games for the Minnesota Twins before being demoted to Rochester. High fly ball in the center. And Durango corrals it. We're out number one. Durango made that look too easy. There's some names that just hang around. It seems like they're on a different roster every year, and Hector Luna is one of them. Do you remember him with the St. Louis Cardinals? I'd say back in 2009. Luna's played for St. Louis, mm -hmm. Cleveland, Toronto, the Dodgers. Come back. Nicely played by Hughes. The Marlins. And last year spent his whole season in the Red Sox organization with Triple A Paul Tuckett. It's everything you wanted to know about Hector Luna. A lot of sky miles. <laughs> Here's another guy, Ty Wigginton. This time of year, look in the papers, you'll see him in a box score with somebody. Made his name with the Mets originally, and he's bounced around a bit since then. It's one of those good utility guys, can play the infield, can play the outfield. Another lazy fly, Durango will put the squeeze on it for out number three. Nice inning for Dusty Hughes. The Atlanta eighth is coming up, but the Braves trailing it seven to two.
Phillies on top of the Braves, seven to two. Bottom of the eighth upcoming. Braves fans, don't forget about the Atlanta Braves Kids Club presented by Chick Fil A. It's only twenty-five dollars to join, and look at what's included: two free Braves tickets, a Brian McCann jersey backpack, great Kids Club events all year long, and VIP line access for kids run the bases. Go to Braves.com/kids. Nobody better to deal with kids and Brian McCann one of the all around great guys in Major League Baseball always takes extra time. We were leaving the ballpark last Sunday it's probably an hour after the game was over Brian McCann walking to his car and there's still some fans waiting for autographs and sure enough he takes the time walks over and signs them an extra 10 minutes out of his day it might not seem like much but quite frankly there's a lot of players that would not take the time to do that. New pitcher is Brian Sanchez. Sanchez used out of the bullpen. 6 4 3 earned run average this year, going up against Freddie Freeman. And what will likely be his final at bat of the day? We call Freddie Freeman the Iron Man. Standing there, eighth inning. You get the feeling as competitive as he is, he probably insisted on staying in. No question about it. If you're a manager over there, you're holding your breath. <laughs> I remember Bobby Costa said, look, just get out healthy guys, get three at bats and, and take take the shower and go home and relax. One ball, one strike. Freeman ropes one into the gap in right center field. That'll be at least one. Takes an aggressive turn. He's going for two, and he's in there. Freddie Freeman showing some acceleration. <laughs> Good job of staying behind that changeup up in the zone, uh, using that lower half and driving this ball in the gap and just being aggressive here. And that was all Freddie Freeman because I know Terry Pendleton did not tell him to go. <laughs> Freeman's day is done. Pinch runner for Freddie. And Eric Hinsky, the new batter, a pinch hitter. Yep. Jose Yepes, the pinch runner. Minsky this spring, 21 games, a 2.14 clip, and a pair of bombs. One of the leaders Freddie Gonzalez was talking about earlier. The Pete Orr. Nice play by Orr. Robbed Hinsky of a hit and an RBI. Lopez goes to third on the play. Well, we've talked a lot about some of the new guys like a Freddie Freeman. I've mentioned this these three numbers Brian a couple of times. Three numbers that I think are sure to be better in 2012. You look at what these three guys did last year. Hayward at 227 a career 255 hitter. Ugla 233 well below his career average and we all know Martin Prado is a much better hitter than 260 as his career average would indicate. I think when you start forecasting things for Atlanta, you can feel very safe in knowing all three of those players will have better numbers this season. No question about it. I really believe a lot of these guys learned from last year, which you can and cannot do. Uh, just to see Dan Ugla stay in there and, and be the great competitor that he, he was and, and is uh, to take all the the fanfare of disappointment early in the season uh, to, to end the way he did. You know he's going to get off to a great start, being more aggressive in spring training. And all the work and dedication that Haywood put in this uh, offseason is starting to pay off. I think all those guys are going to look back at last year, forget about it, and put up some great years. Paraz chops one to short. 
A run will score on the play, give him an RBI, and it's seven to three. When I look at Jason Hayward, and yeah, there's still going to be people that are curious. What is the real Jason Hayward? He's so young that you know it's still an unfinished product, but his batting average dropped 50 points, his slugging dropped 67. There's just no way that kind of decline would happen two straight years. He's working extra long with hitting coach Greg Walker. And much like pitchers adjust, Jason Hayward, a hitter, can adjust as well. Oh, a nice play again. The backup Philadelphia infield playing quite well and robbing Atlanta hitters from doing some damage here late. The Braves are able to play to run. It's now 7 to 3 as we head to the ninth. Atlanta trailing Philadelphia 7 3 hour score here at Champion Stadium. Don't forget the Gwinnett Braves are back. The AAA version of the Braves and their future stars honing their skills. You can join us throughout the year. 25 games all live on CSS. Go to CSS sports.com for the complete schedule. A new pitcher, a new first baseman for Atlanta. Yepes moves to first in place of Freeman. The new pitcher is Adam Russell. Who is one of the largest human beings I've seen in a while? <laughs> he is every bit of 6'8. They list him at 255. Maybe. Uh, he signed by the Braves as a minor league free agent on December of 2011. Last year, pitched for the Devil Rays in 36 games. He was 1 and 2 with a 3.03 earned run average. All those outings in relief. He's out of Ohio. Pete Orr, who's been magnificent in the field, starts things off at the plate for the Phillies. It'll be a very interesting Eastern Division this year. You can't just look at the same duo that we have for the last few years, Philadelphia and Atlanta. The Marlins are going to be in the discussion. The Nationals could very well be in the discussion. Well, it's a new attitude in Miami. Thanks to Ozzie Gian. Well, I guarantee you he will have those guys ready to play some baseball. He has a real good pitching rotation also. A lot of people not talking about that starting rotation that they have. Well, if, if Josh Johnson stays healthy, that is that is the million dollar question in mm -hmm. Miami. Uh, he is a Cy Young candidate right. when he's pitching. When he's on the mound, when he's healthy, bottom line. Anibal Sanchez, Ricky Delasco. And they've got some guys that can throw, and of course, uh, the wild card is Zambrano, Carlos Zambrano. They picked up. I guarantee you, Zambrano has an excellent season this year. I think so. Yes. One, Ozzy Guillen will challenge him, uh, both mentally and physically. Payoff is grounded weekly to second. One away. While we have a moment, 
I want to thank our terrific crew here at CSS. Steve Ram, Sean Moore, Russ Aaron, Amanda Pendleton among the all-stars that uh, join us every year down here. We, we brought the A crew and uh, they worked especially hard trying to make us look good each and every year. And that's here a in tough the job to that's do. That's not easy work. <laughs> but we certainly appreciate their diligence this season and uh, thank everybody with the Braves as well for being great hosts and helping us with all the great interviews you've been able to see throughout the course of our broadcasts here in Central Florida. And of course, we'll be back with you in a couple of days, not from spring training, but from Cool Ray Field where Gwinnett plays, and it'll be the Braves active roster against the future All-Stars. Bobby Cox will be managing against Freddie Gonzalez in that one. Good battle here with Russell and Nix. And I got to say this, Mike. I'm dedicated to CSS, the Atlanta Braves, uh -huh. because I'm calling this game with you on Tuesday, and Bobby Cox offered me to coach beside him. Yeah. And I turned it down. Right. Unbelievable. You had a chance to be with Bobby and you're stuck with me. <laughs> well, that was interesting. That was <laughs> or two by Russell, and then. Uh, Throws a seed over the first. <laughs> yep, has probably got a big old bruise on his left hand after this one. Yep, his heart probably pounded. <laughs> oh my goodness, his heart was pounding. Got somebody six eight <laughs> that close to you throwing a a seed over to you. <laughs> wow. I mean, he didn't take anything off this throw. Watch this. Boom. <laughs> Hot potato. <laughs> Uh. Mayberry Jr., guy you've been hearing quite a bit about for the last few years in the Phillies organization. This is a guy where I thought was really going to secure that left field spot. But with the uh, pickup of Juan Pierre, I'm not sure. You know, either you're going to have the speed lineup or the power lineup out there. But wow, this kid has some uh, power and potential. For a while, it was guys like Mayberry and Brown battling, and then of course they pick up Hunter Pence, who will be your everyday right fielder in Philadelphia. And then you got John Mayberry who can play a little first base. Mm -hmm. Also, be that right handed bat in Alana. Nice looking slider by Adam Russell. Strike three call. Backward K for Adam Russell. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Rally caps on for the Braves, trailing it seven to three.
Braves spring training game is brought to you by VisitFlorida.com. Unleash your Florida sign at VisitFlorida.com. Brian Jordan, humbly sitting alongside yours truly, Mike Morgan. Thank you so much for joining us. Frank Gailey is the new pitcher for Philadelphia. We're at Champion Stadium in its 15th year of existence. I've had a chance to catch just about every ballpark in the Grapefruit League, and i got to tell you, there's none better than this one. If you haven't had a chance to come on out, good family trip. You can go to Disney, catch a few Braves games every spring. Bo Scott will start things off for the Bravos here in the Atlanta ninth. J.C., RBI double his last at bat in the sixth inning. Braves already in great shape at catcher with an all-star in McCann and David Ross, one of the top backups around. We have one of the top young prospects in Betancourt. Every time you talk about him with the coaches, personnel, people, their eyes just light up. He's got all kinds of potential. Tell you what, that Gwinnett roster is going to look pretty good this year. You think about it when Tim Hudson comes back, which you're likely looking at at the top of your rotation in Triple A. Julio Tehran and Randall Delgado. Still got to figure out where some of the other guys like a Tordasovich will play and then whoever does not win the shortstop job of course will either be in double A Mississippi or triple A win it. <laughs> Anderson Simmons was actually drafted as a pitcher which would help explain that incredible arm that he has. I well, said he threw in the mid 90s to upper 90s. Yeah. But he really wanted to play shortstop, so they gave him that opportunity in hopes that he would fail and so they <laughs> keep him at pitcher. But well, when you hit over 300 in the minors, and all of a sudden you've earned the right to stay at shortstop. And you have the range that he has. Defensively, he's major league ready. There's no doubt in my mind. It's just. You know, he hasn't had a lot of bats at the minor league level. Boscon draws the free pass. We haven't seen much of Simmons in our broadcast, but of course we'll see him in the Futures game on Tuesday. We'll have a chance to show off that arm. And all indications are tomorrow will be the day that all those unanswered questions will be answered. You'll know who your opening day shortstop is. You'll know who the number five guy in the rotation will be. You already know who the first four are with Hanson going on opening day, Jurgens, then Miner and Brandon Beachy right now, the number four guy. I really like that mix with Mike Miner being that third guy. You, know, you got two righties and then you get that lefty. <laughs> Jurgens has pitched very well his last two starts, including the one we had for you last week against Houston. And I think it's safe to say that Tommy Hansen and his new delivery, which is quicker to the plate, he's going to be fine. As long as he can stay healthy, Tommy Hansen should be poised for a good year. Everybody's very high on Brandon Beachy. The question will be, can he go deeper into games? And for Mike Miner, he's he's the guy. He doesn't have to fight for the spot anymore. Maybe he can pitch a little more loose than he has in years past. He sure has done it down here in spring training. He's been real loose. And he's had a terrific spring. And it'll be fun to have Chris Medlin back. He's such a valuable guy. I don't think you can say that enough. Well, now you have two swing men in the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Look at Medlin and now uh, Hernandez, Levon. Battle continues with Josh Wilson, 
who played 54 games for the Milwaukee Brewers last year. Only the second meeting between these two teams. The Braves dropped the first one six to four back on March the 15th. And the Phillies appear to be in good shape to take another one unless the Braves can put together a heck of a rally here in the bottom of the ninth. That's a good way to do it. Deep into the gap in left center field and gone. Home run for Josh Wilson. And all of a sudden, it's a two run game with nobody out. Josh is trying to make that last minute impression. <laughs> a good battle at the plate. Got a pitch up, stayed back, and Josh is looking over to Freddie and saying, I have some power too. That, but Pastor Nikki One ball one strike Three at bats. Single back in the third. Walk in the fifth and walk in the seventh. How about another one? A hat trick of base on balls for Pastor Nicky. And now the tying run comes to the plate. Frank Gailey. Gailey feeling the pressure. The Philly bullpen is stirring as we speak. Ryan Duke loosening up for the Phils. Durango will be the batter. Takes inside. They play him straight up and straight away. At least Durango has to be patient here. Just walk Tyler past the Nicky. Put the pressure on him to throw strikes and he swings. No way. And it's buckled and short and everybody is safe. Don't see that often. Freddie Galvis makes that error. Just trying to get rid of it too quick. And that's usually the sure-handed Freddie Galvis. This game is not over yet, folks. Jose Peraza squaring drops down a beauty. Only play is first, and there's a collision between the pitcher and the catcher, and everybody is safe. Wow. When things start going bad, <laughs> they go bad. You've got to let the catcher have that. He's the captain out there. Wow, this is a perfect bunt, though. Squared around early. And you can almost see Snyder. Yelling out there saying I got it. Jose Yepes has a chance to be a hero. Tying run at second, the winning run at first. And that 
ball came close to hitting him. You know, last time I said the hitter has to be patient. He swung at the pitch, so I'm not going to say anything. But the pressure is truly on Frank Gailey here, who is struggling. Chopper to short could be two. And it is. A run scores on the play. A runner at third with two down. It's a one run game. And we got one of the regulars now at the plate, and Eric Hinsky. He represents the winning run. And that's just being young, Mike. These young, young hitters. In that situation, you got a struggling pitcher out there on the mound. You have to make him throw a strike before you take the bat off your shoulder. Hinsky grounded out and is only at bat. He's got two home runs this spring. No wind at all to speak of right now. Two and zero. Oh. Hinsky, who has had a flair for the dramatics in his career. Three and zero. Oh. Frank Gailey cannot find the strike zone. Peraz is on deck. Hitsky unleashes on the 3 0 pitch. Well, that's a veteran who's been around the game. You know the pressure's on that pitcher. And Hitsky trusts himself as a hitter. He got a 3 0 count there. And he's normally aggressive, and Freddie Gonzalez allows him to have that green light. It's now seven apiece. Just a true veteran hitter right there, Eric Hinsky. You said he had a flair for dramatics. Uh, he was very patient, took the 3-0 count, was aggressive on the 3-0, and now 3-1. Just ropes it down the line for an RBI double to tie the ball game. Wow. And the Phillies will go back to the bullpen. We'll find out who the new pitcher is in just a moment. Seven to seven, our score. The Braves with the winning run in the form of Eric Hinsky. Now it's second base. Again, Atlanta trailed this game at one point, seven to one. A run in the sixth, a run in the eighth, and now four runs here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, this is a sign of what. What's to come during the season, I guess, Mike? <laughs> well, the Braves have been involved in a lot of these close games really the last couple of years. If you remember two years ago, Atlanta led the majors in last at bat victories. That was really a key to that team's ride into the playoffs. We know how many close games this team always seems to participate in, so a little more practice with some close game situations never hurts, as you see. The dugout for the Braves trying to Rally here for another run in the night. Ryan Duke warming up for Philadelphia. Fans, get your tickets today for the Braves All Stars versus the Future Stars game on April the 3rd at Cool Ray Field. Come see manager Freddie Gonzalez. The Braves take on former Braves skipper Bobby Cox and the team's brightest prospects. For tickets, go to Braves.com slash Future Stars or call 678 Two seven seven zero three four zero. Well, this is a great opportunity for the young man Jordan Peraz.
to come up and win the ball game and continue to impress Freddie Gonzalez and Frank Wren and the organization. The chance to win a ball game, right? He's had a great spring. He's made a name for himself this spring. After spending most of his career in the Yankees organization, made it up to AAA last year, had a good season with the Yankees. And the Braves signed him as a minor league free agent back in November of last year. Ross has got some pop in that bat too. Only needs a single here. Duke the right hander staring in. And as a hitter here you don't have to hit the home run. Just look to do what Juan Pierre and Victorino does for the Phillies. Just slap that ball find the hole and win this ball game. So many guys get tight in this position and want to swing for the fences. And you just can't do that. You have to relax in a situation where you got to run in scoring position. Tie ball game late. 2 0. Paraz attended Southern Nevada Community College. in there for a strike if I'm not mistaken Southern Nevada CC is where Bryce Harper went where a lot of college guys like to go because it's a wooden bat league not an aluminum two one pitch off the plate three one count you want to be aggressive get something that you can drive somewhere Gets the chance to be the hero. Sutton hitting from the left side. Talk about his versa versatility. Can play every position, and he's a switch hitter. These do. Hitless today in four trips. Inski the lead runner off the bag at second. Ripped foul. Braves looking for their 11th win of the spring. And their first against the Phillies. Goes to the tenth partner. It's that time we start checking the flight reservations. <laughs> That's right. Count even up. Two balls, two strikes. I don't see anybody warming up in the Braves bullpen out there? Oh, Freddie and. Made a talk before the game and said, hey, if we go nine and it's tied, let's go home. It's the last two games of spring. You don't want anybody to get hurt. Wouldn't be surprised. Three and two. Charlie Manuel is one of those laid back managers He's saying the same thing. You don't want anybody to get hurt. It's the last couple of games. Bullpen is silent. Crowd ready to erupt. If Sutton can drive in Hinsky. Runners will be going. Down the left field line, slicing foul. That would have done it. Oh. 
Drew Sutton born in El Dorado, Arkansas. Same home state as today's starting pitcher for the Phillies, Cliff Lee. Takes it low, ball four, bases loaded. Wow. It's up to J.C. Boscon, who walked his last at bat, had an RBI double back in the sixth inning. Let's see if he can be the hero, Mike. That'd be great for Boscon. His hitting has always been under the spotlight. Be a great moment for him. Inski crouched off the bag at third. Ryan Duke laboring on the mound. Nowhere to put him now. Good take by JC. He's forcing the pitcher to throw a strike. And that was pretty close. <laughs> Tried to pull that one and wound up pulling off it. And that's when you get in trouble. That was that same pitch he just called a strike. Base is loaded with Braves. The one that matters is at third. A single wins it for Atlanta. And a great catch by one of the fans to our right. Wow. Pulled off the hat and snagged it. <laughs> and his daughter is smiling. One and two to the Braves catcher. Josh Wilson on deck. He can sit down in the dugout somewhere. <laughs> Full count. on their feet. The payoff to Boscan popped up. That was ball four, man. And that ends the Braves' ninth. Four runs for Atlanta to tie it at seven. And now we're waiting on the verdict for inning number ten. See the umpires. There it is. That's the call. It's over. It's and over. They have decided that will do it. So we will end it in a tie. Seven to seven. Your final score. It's the fifth time the Braves have finished a game this spring with a tie. That's still a great comeback. Four runs in the bottom of the ninth. Nice to see Atlanta have some late inning heroics and uh, salvage this game, so to speak, pick up the tie. A lot of different things about this game that stick out. Name one or two in your mind, right? Well, the fact that, you know, in a sad way, Tehran did not look as good as uh, we expected. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for him, only coming into this game, throwing 13 innings this spring, I really don't think he's going to be that fifth guy. I think Delgado definitely has the edge. And I'm, I'm happy to see the young guy, Josh Wilson, go deep. You know, you talk about guys making that last-minute impression. Well, it was a great job by him hitting that two two run bomb to get it started in this ninth inning and the Braves. They were patient down the stretch and that's what they need more. of. We saw last year in September. These guys couldn't drive in that late run. Well, today they did that. 
I would just add one thing. Tyler Pasternicki in the other hot race got on base four times today, three times via walk, but you'll take it any way you can get it. He finishes off uh, these uh, final couple weeks of spring training in a pretty uh, pretty good way. So good news for Tyler Pasternicki in the race for that shortstop job. That's it for us here from uh, Central Florida, but don't forget we'll be back with you in two days. On a Tuesday night at Coure Field, it'll be the Braves taking on the future stars. Plenty of the players that you'll see at AAA Gwinnett. That's going to do it for us today. Again, your final score, 7-7. Seven to seven. The Phillies and the Braves finishing a tie. Have a terrific week and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. For Brian Jordan, Mike Morgan saying so long, everybody.